so now let's keep going. Uh, we're gonna put on the fenders, the axle, leaf springs, and the chain and flip the whole thing over. So that's what we're gonna work on. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the fender um, and the fender assembly. We technically don't have to, well, yeah, we do. I was thinking we could leave off a piece of it, but the wheel obscures the fender, so you really have to do both at the same time. So, uh, the way that this goes together is this plate mounts to the side of the uh, frame and then inside here. So it comes together sort of like that and then sticks on the side of the frame. So the first step is putting the plate onto the side and make sure it making sure that the orientation is correct. So it should be pointing down because the, um, because the, uh, uh, the trailer is upside down right now. And the bolts come from the outside in. so that you don't run the risk of the bolt shredding the, the tire. So once that's on, then we just attach the fender. And there is a side in this to the fender. One side is a little bit, the holes are a little closer on one side than they are on the other. And you want the, the side that's closer inside uh, so that the fender is further away from the trailer. If you put it the other way, the fender will ride on the trailer and And we do the same thing on the other side. All right, so both of those steps are done now. So we finished page three in the booklet. So on to page four. So page four is putting in the leaf springs and putting in the, uh, the axle. So we're gonna do both of those. So these are the leaf springs. See if I can find where I left my knife. Ah, behind the fan. Okay. So these are the leaf springs. And they're light duty. Um, so they're not, you know, if you're going to go off-roading or something like that, these are not the springs for you. Um, our plan for the camper is uh, primarily to do, uh, you know, national parks, uh, state campgrounds, um, Stuff where there might not be electrical, but it's, um, you know, not uh, boondocking and not like BLM or, uh, you know, something quite that uh, elaborate where we'd be using forest ro service roads or something like that. So um, these should be, oops, wrong way. These should be okay for us. Um, and if they aren't, we can always upgrade. Pretty easy to remove these and put on different ones. Yeah. 
And I just need to make sure I've got the orientation correct. And of course it does. So the uh, hinge side of it goes towards the front and the L-shaped side goes towards the back. A couple of large carriage bolts that go in for this. Ah, so these guys that we saw earlier in that package, there were two big ones, two, small, two smaller ones. So two 19 millimeter heads, two 17 millimeter heads. These two 17 millimeter heads go in the front and hold the, uh, the chain in place. So I'm gonna put those up front here so I don't, uh, I don't lose those guys or forget what they're for. But what we want now is this bag. Well, now it's a container. But this has all of the hardware for the axle uh, and leaf springs. So this is what we're using. So these two beefy guys on either side. So there should be four of these in here, and there are. And then, oops. And then two of these U-bolts that hold the, uh, the axle onto the leaf spring on both sides uh, in conjunction with these plates. And all of this, I believe, is stainless steel hardware. And I think these are 19s again. Yep. 19s. All right. So, let's pull out those plates and those U bolts. And we'll keep these guys. So, Okay, so I think I can put these bolts in first on the springs and then put the axle and the U-bolts on to hold the axle in place. So that's what we're going to try and see how that goes. So these guys go outside in. So the bolt side is on the outside, the nut side is on the inside. And I believe there is a certain amount of play on either side of this. Match the two springs, the left and right spring hanger, spring eyes facing forward, use two sets of the bolts. Leave these bolts loose temporarily to allow proper assembly of the next steps. And now we do the same thing on the other side. The way that these work is you have this plate which comes from underneath like that. You've got this guy over top like that and then the, the axle kind of slides through. And there's a little, there's a, a nipple on the bottom that lines up with this indentation in the center of the plate so that it picks it itself. When you have it aligned, it's not moving. Just like on top, there's there's another one that's an alignment bump. All right. So now the other key is knowing which way to orient the axle. So again, this is a this is a C-channel axle, which means that this is, is open, right? So most axles, this is, all solid, this is all closed up and it's a solid piece or something like that. This one is open, which means it can collect material, right? And so when I look at, when I look at the, 
diagram, I'm not sure it actually tells me which way it should go. Let's see. Just says place the axle on top of the springs, align depressions on the axle with protrusions on the springs. So, oh, okay. So I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can get in here. But there is, right here is that little indentation. So this indentation matches up with the indentation on the, uh, on the leaf spring. And so then the U-channel is, is pointed down essentially when the, when the vehicle is operating, which is what I would want, right? You want material that collects in here to fall out, not to get all caked up in there upside down. So that's great. So we match up the alignment hole with the spring. And you can see I can kind of shake it a little bit and it won't slide. So it's nested in those uh, little, little pits. Oops, almost. There we are. Oh, you know what? Let me take off this stuff. Ugh. Let's take off the bubble wrap before we bolt everything down. That would probably be a good plan. And yeah, we'll leave it on the axle for right now. Okay, so that one's seated. Let's cut this back. And that one's seated. So you can see when you shake it, it actually moves the springs because they're seated properly. And then the U channel is actually. Uh, Facing, it'll be facing down. So now the plate also kind of gets fixed on that uh, on that piece on that little uh, bump underneath, and then we put nuts on the top and the bottom or on the bottoms to tighten down the U bolts. And all of these nuts in the kit are nylon uh, lock nuts, um, which is nice. So they, uh, they won't very likely vibrate backwards and come undone, which is super helpful. By the way, one of these ratcheting open or closed ended branches is really handy on this project. What we wanted to do is get the plate positioned and also tighten in a way that makes it fit properly. Um, when you're tightening a U-bolt, you do both sides a little bit at a time so it doesn't kink one way or the other. And when you're doing something like this, you tighten one side up until it's just a little bit loose, then you tighten the other side up until it's just a little bit loose, and then you go around and tighten everything down completely. Okay, so now we're going to look at all our bolts and just see how they look. And then we want to tighten everything down. Okay, so that's on there good. And then we're just going to do the same thing on this side. The other thing we want to make sure of is that we have about the same amount of bolts sticking out of the nut on both of the U-bolts. So we're pretty sure that the plate isn't sort of canted one way or the other. 
Okay, so then the last thing is coming back and tightening up these 19 milliliter uh, bolts. <clears throat> We're starting to bend the frame in on itself. So I'm thinking that's probably a little too tight. All right. Okay, so uh, that is the end of, I forget what number we're on, that one. So next step is hubs and wheels. So like I said, we're going to put the wheels on. You should completely repack the bearings. Uh, but we're not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to put the wheels on. And then uh, later on, we're going to do the uh, repack the bearings and everything. Um, but for this step, it's just to get them installed. And then basically, we'll be done at that point. So the only other tricky thing here is now the fender and all this other stuff is sort of in our way when we rotate it. Um, so we just have to be a little bit more careful about how we rotate the frame because it can't just rest on the fenders um, like it did before. So the best way to do that is to brace it at the height of the fender so that you're pivoting up onto something that basically keeps it off the fender. Uh, so to do that, I think I'm going to nab some 4x4 four four blocks and, uh, and bring those in here. So I need to get those. Okay, by the magic of video editing, we now have 4x4 four four blocks underneath the trailer. We're going to take the jack stand off and set it near but not on. Do the same thing on the other side. Ugh. Okay. So, what we're going to need to do, I need another set on this side. What we're going to need to do is move these one set at a time from that set to this set when it's up on its edge. So it comes up on its edge and then we pivot, get it on the new set of blocks, move a set of blocks, pivot, move a set of blocks, pivot, and then lay the whole thing down back on the jack stands. So that's the theory anyway. Let's see how it works in practice. So first step is lifting this up and seeing, nope, that was not high enough. So we need to go up higher. Um, oh, you know what I can do? Okay, scratch that idea.
Uh, I tried the blocks. What ended up happening was that fender right there didn't clear. And so I started thinking about other ideas and then realized that I can use the jack stands with some two by fours to create a set of rails that's higher than the clearance on the, uh, on the axle and the um, fender. So now I should be able to lift the whole thing up, just scooch it from one side, you know, move it from this side to that side, and then lean it back down again. And it should all just be pivots and levers as opposed to deadlifts, uh, which should be something that I should be able to do on my own. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing is I took the jack stands out and moved them out away from the edges so that there's little chance that I would over slide and the whole thing would uh, be on the other side of the, of the jack stand and create essentially a fulcrum. So, which we don't want. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the whole thing up, set it on its edge, pull it this way, and then set it back down again. Oh, I need this tape out of the way. All right, so we're going to stand this up on its edge. Oh, there we go. That's why we wanted the jack stands to go wide, because this whole thing will also oh. All right, then. Well, that was not what we expected but it still worked. So, in retrospect, I would probably keep the two by fours flat instead of on edge. I was thinking on edge would give it more stability uh, and more strength. Um, but what ended up happening on that end is that the two by four started to tilt a little bit and then went flat and slid off the jack stand completely and so I ended up having to support the whole front end of the trailer on my own. Um, but thankfully the back stayed stable, otherwise that could have been bad. Um, and we didn't hit any of the fenders. We didn't bend the axle, nothing. It landed on the tongue. Um, and all in all, we were in good shape. So, we're going to put this up onto the jack stands again and move on. But I do think I'm going to keep it on these 2x4 rails just you know, on the flat instead of on the end. just gives a little bit more flexibility for moving around a little. And uh, keeps me from rubbing metal against metal. Now we need this whole thing to come up so we can get the wheels underneath it. <laughs> because there's not enough clearance like that, Whew. which is fine because the jack stands are adjustable. All right, so this is the axle down here, um, which is where we're putting the wheel. Um, and this is the wheel that we're going to uh, put on there. If you've never taken a bearing cap off before, um, this one I think I lucked out a little bit because there was a bit of a ridge already available between the cap 
and the uh, hub. So I can just fit a screwdriver in there, twist, and uh, do it from different sides to try and uh, slowly uh, angle the cap up. There we go. And there we are. There's the cap. It's got all this blue goo in there. That is just uh, packing lube. It is not, it's not good bearing grease. Um, so when we actually pack these, we're going to want to get all of that off of there and replace it with uh, good grease. Um, and these are the bearings that are in there. So again, it's good enough for now. And there's two sets of bearings in here. Um, there's a front bearing and a rear bearing. There we go. All right, so that's on there. And again, we're not we're not going to repack this. Um, we're not going to do anything with this. We're just going to. Um, leave it as is. So what we're doing now is uh, we just put the washer on and then we put the castle net on. And um, I'm not even going to twist the cotter pins, I don't think. Um, I think I might just leave them off for right now. Because again, I don't, I don't want to take this anywhere. I'm not going to take this on the road. And I don't feel like losing a set of cotter pins for no good reason. There's a lot of good videos on um, the Harbor Freight wheels on YouTube. So if you haven't uh, if you haven't seen those, I definitely encourage you to go look at them. Uh, most of what I learned, I learned watching other people working on these trailers. and a little bit from my own experience. Okay, so that's on there. Again, we don't really want to drive anywhere with it because if we did, that wheel would fall off. So all we're gonna do is Good enough for now. And we're gonna just repeat the other, the same thing on the other side. Okay, so the wheels are on the trailer and everything else is ready to go. I'm gonna put the chain on the front and then we're gonna roll it outside and, um, and it's good for now. So what we can use this for is sort of measuring, you know, how big something might be sitting on this um, you know, how much room we have, what we're dealing with, whether or not we want to change the shape of this versus what's the, what, how the CLC is set up. Um, the axle, so you figure this is halfway uh, here. The axle is just about six inches uh, aft, you know, towards the back of the, um, of the center of this. However, weight-wise, because you have all this metal up here and the tongue and everything up here, the weight is still heavily towards the front compared to the back. 
So this back here, probably, I would say a quarter of the weight is on the other side of the axle, aft of the axle, and I would say three-fourths of the weight as it is right now is forward of the axle. So that seems to be the stable situation for, for this trailer. When I've loaded this trailer up with lumber and stuff, uh, I typically have just laid it out the entire length of the trailer since this is essentially the size of a 4x8 sheet of plywood and most of the dimensional lumber that I'm going to buy is like 6 to 8 feet long depending on what, I'm, what project I'm doing. Usually that's about where it sits. Um, an 8 foot piece is just going to sit the length of this trailer. I have not had to load adjust front to back for stability. Typically actually when I load this trailer up at all it's very stable. Uh, versus unloaded. Unloaded it's bouncing all over the place because it just doesn't have a lot of weight to it. But the minute you put, you know, a couple hundred pounds of lumber on it, it's well distributed. Um, so you don't have to push it too far forward or something. So the camper itself is a couple hundred pounds. Uh, the battery, the AGM battery that I'm looking at for the, um, uh, for the electrical system I think is a hundred pounds. So putting that in a tongue box up here should still push the weight forward some. Uh, so we'll have to look at what the tongue weight is um, when, it's, when it's all built and then decide whether or not I need to shift the camper around a little bit. And then what that looks like, whether I have to trim something off the back of the frame or I need to, you know, work with what's there, put a little, you know, uh, shelf or something, who knows. But, <clears throat> we'll figure it out as we uh, as we grow. So, but that's the plan for right now. Um, so, I think that's uh, I think that's it for this video. Um, and again, uh, stay tuned for the uh, for the next ones uh, as we actually get into the camper build and start doing some more interesting stuff. Hopefully, you found this interesting. Uh, you know, I was looking for videos like this when I first was building a Harbor Freight trailer. Um, and I found some, uh, but what I've tried to include in mine is the stuff that I wish uh, somebody could have told me when I was building the trailer, like, which side is up? Where do the bolts go? <laughs> you know, which direction should I put this thing in? Should this show thread or should this show a head? Who knows, right? So um, somebody, you know, having a video that actually says that, that's why I said it, because um, I thought that would be helpful for someone. So anyway, more to come. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, appreciate it. Um, uh, as always, uh, if you like the content, please click the like button. Uh, feel free to subscribe so that you can uh, see new stuff that's coming up in the channel as we get those posted. And definitely click the notify me button um, so that you can get notified when we launch new videos. I'm not sure the exact frequency that these are gonna come out, uh, it just depends on my work schedule and how the project goes and everything and when stuff comes and what else is going on, life, whatnot. Um, but maybe once a week, maybe once every other week, we'll just have to see. Um, but, uh, but if you click the notify button, then you'll find when they come out and you can watch the next one and go through and hopefully it'll be interesting and fun and uh, you'll enjoy it uh, watching, if not for any other reason, then to periodically watch me fall on my butt um, when uh, something like today happens. So uh, thank you very much and uh, take care.